Hello, welcome to OET Medical Writing Videos. This is Lesson 5. My name is Trevor Gordon, one of the founders of OET Online. And today, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at punctuation rules. We're going to learn about capitalization, commas, colons, semicolons, full stops or periods, and hyphens. These will only be related to OET, not the general rules, because there are many rules related to these topics, and we don't need to know them all. We only need to know the ones relevant to your letter. So there will be many examples here, but there will be a few that aren't, ex aren't directly related to the letter, but can, could, be, could be incorporated into a letter. Let's begin. The first thing we're going to look at, capitalization, when to use capital letters. So we have six things here, people's names, so proper nouns, are people's names. Titles, Mr, Mrs, Doctor, etc. In the UK we have people who have honours. This is why I've used the word honours. Occasionally there might be someone who comes in who has an honour, like an OBE or a CBE or Sir. We have many famous Sirs, Sir Paul McCartney, Sir Elton John. The chances of you meeting one of them are quite slim, but again, we use capital letters with people with honours. For example, a very famous football player known as David Beckham, he is an OBE. So that would be O, capital O, capital B, capital E. Place names, cities, countries, institutions. Institutions means names of companies or buildings. For example, the name of a hospital in this case, or a name of a clinic in this case. Beginning of each sentence, of course, always begin each sentence with a capital letter. Days, months and holidays, but not seasons. Days, Wednesday, months, January, holidays, Christmas, Easter. Titles, again, that's going back to titles, languages. German, Spanish, nationalities, German, Spanish, whatever. And then when you're quoting someone, if you're using, using quotation marks, which you probably won't be doing in this letter, then you would begin anything inside the quotes with a capital letter. Do not capitalize after a colon unless you're using a proper noun. I'll come back to that later because we're going to do a section on colons. So, capitalization examples. So, we use capitals for people's names. Mr. Smith, Dr. Smith, Mrs. Annabelle Jackson, Miss Davis. We also use MD. Often this is not used when you're writing to someone because you would say doctor, but MD means medical doctor. It's an abbreviation. But the abbreviations like this should be in capital letters. Okay. So when we're talking about drugs, mm -hmm. brand names, we use capital letters. Panadol, tyl oh, Tylenol, that should say. We use capital letters if it's a brand name. If it's a generic name, we don't, like aspirin. Aspirin is aspirin. It's not a brand name, so we would use small a, A-S-P. Okay, so you will always use capitals for patients' names, the names of the hospital, the official name of the hospital, for example, St. Luke's Hospital, not the hospital that would be in lower case because it could be any hospital but if it's a specific hospital you're talking about then we would use capitals like here 
We do not use capitals if, we're, we're, if we are referring to a person's job or profession. You can go and see the nurse at reception. Miss Sims, which is a person's name, so we use capitals here, in room A is a physiotherapist. Don't need capitals here. Nurse, physiotherapist. And linking this one with this one, we do not use capital for generic medication. Aspirin, diazepam, many others. So here's some examples of something you might see in your letter. I've just used my imagination a little bit. Um, and just so I could put some things in to, to expand the example. So here, dear Dr. Jackson, we're beginning the na someone's name. So that's the beginning of a sentence effectively. So we use that. Capitals for the name. Beginning another sentence. Somebody's name. Name of the hospital, Papworth Hospital. Again, I've used this so I can give you the examples. Next week on Wednesday, 4th of September. Days, months. Begin a new sentence. He will need. And then, Tylenol. Uh, I spelt that wrong again, incorrectly. And aspirins. Okay, so that's an example where you can clearly see when to use capital letters. Now the next example is something that would be more likely to be something that you would write. Okay. Dear Miss Sims, RE, so if we're referencing someone, the R will be capital. Person's name. If we're writing date of birth, if we're writing an abbreviation, we write DOB in capitals. If we write date of birth, it doesn't have to be capitals. January month, 1990. So, we've just got some sentences here. First sentence, the patient. Second sentence, she. Third sentence, I would like to. So, that's more like you will be writing. Okay, these examples and the sample letters, sorry, that should say, which you read as part of your studies, should be enough for you to understand and use the rules for capitalization. Moving on to commas. Commas are the most difficult area of punctuation because of their variety of uses. But I'm going to give you a list of uh, examples which you can see there but they're not as daunting as they may seem. Most of them you probably already know. So let's begin. So when writing, however, we have certain guidelines which should be followed. Use a comma before any coordinating conjunction. Here are the conjunctions, otherwise known as fanboys. If, you've ever, if you study grammar, you may have heard fanboys. So F A N B O why s fanboys so they're what are known as coordinating conjunctions they link two independent clauses and many grammar books contain this kind of reference so you can find this anywhere a dependent clause which begins a sentence a dependent clause is a clause that cannot be used alone you have to link it to something but before you link it to something you have to use a comma to separate items in a list. To use adverbs to begin sentences. To separate elements in an address. To separate elements in a full date. To separate adjectives referring to the same noun. To negate something and in large number sequences. Every third number. This will become clear. Okay, so on this page, all I've done is I've just given you examples for you to see of all those things. So I'll go through them. Remember, you can watch this video as many times as you like. So don't think you have to look, you have to understand everything 
right now. You don't. So, using coordinating conjunctions, the patient needs to be sedated and, so comma, and, there's our first one, observe, observed, observed for several hours, comma, but, there's our second one, will not require any more medication for 24 hours. Again, I'm just using my imagination to make these sentences so I can demonstrate. Now, the next one, before receiving treatment, this sentence cannot exist on its own, but it can exist with something else. So, before receiving more treatment, the patient must be examined by the on-duty GP. So, before receiving treatment is a dependent clause. It can't stand alone, but it can be used to begin a sentence that you're going to continue. So, the comma goes in there. Uh, the next one, for actions, sequenced actions. We examined, comma, treated, comma, and then moved the patient to a private ward. ward sorry. The same thing I've given in the next sentence, just using slightly different structure, the passive structure, which you will be required to use in your letter. The patient was given painkillers, treated for chest pains and instructed to rest. So action, 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 comma, comma, separates the actions. Now we're using an adverb. Unfortunately, after we use an adverb to begin a sentence, put a comma there. Fortunately, unfortunately, however, all these ones you've probably come across, a comma comes afterwards. So unfortunately, the tests revealed a malignant growth. A full address. Unit 1, don't have to put a comma there, but I do. St John's Hospital, comma, Rainer Road, comma, Brixworth, the town. 27th of February, comma, 2011, full date. Okay, the next one is using adjectives to describe the same noun. So here we have severe, external and abrasion. Now, this is not ex this is not exactly as an adjective should go, but in when you're talking about medical vocabulary, we don't often use the adjective adjective noun um, format. We slightly vary it. So I've, I've slightly varied it to dis to show a medical situation. So Mr. Jones has a severe external abrasion of the arm or to the arm. I don't know which one's correct. You, you will be telling me that or you can tell me that. And then this one, to negate a positive. When we want to, when we want to confirm something is the opposite, usually we negate it. So we use, this is not this. This is not, this is not this, it's this, for example. We can say, if you're writing a letter, you could say to the person you're writing to just to confirm the injury was caused in a car accident not by a fall okay so maybe they've had some information that tells them that or they've written to you and said um, please t give us details of the p of the patient's car accident you know just misinformation so you would have to write back and say well actually the the injuries were not caused in a car accident they were caused by a fall so it's clearing up information okay you probably won't have to do this but if you are going to do it or have to this is how you do it and the last one is using numbers every third number you put a comma one thousand ten thousands that's if you're writing numbers but you may probably not have to do this Colons and semicolons. Colons are mainly used to provide examples or explain something in listed form. 
They are used to introduce a series of items, introduce bullet points, introduce numerical lists, and use between independent clauses to explain, explain sorry, the first clause. Semicolons are used to join two independent clauses which are related. Used to divide parts of a list. Used to link independent clauses joined by a conjunctive adverb. Rather than you go looking for this, I've just given you some examples. Moreover, then, otherwise, therefore, likewise, consequently, nevertheless, and however. There are examples of conjunct sorry, conjunctive adverbs. Examples. So one of among the tests, plural, so we're gonna have a list, done on the patient were blood, allergy, antibody, and hepatitis. A lot of tests, probably you wouldn't do that many, I don't know. Just an example. But they're preceded with a colon then comma 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 we do the same when we do a bulleted list like this one the colon kicks it off okay there colon then your list same for numbers this could be one two three it's the same format and then the last one here is a sentence the cause of the inflammation was discovered. That's an independent clause. It was bruising to the abdomen. That's also an independent clause. Because it's independent, it's linked to that one, but we're using inflammation. We're changing it to it. So it is an independent clause. So we connect the two independent clauses where the second one explains the first one. You could you you probably would do this in your letter. So moving on to semicolons. Examples. You can go to the opticians to have some tests. Mondays are quite are pretty quiet there, sorry. So these two clauses are linked together the same. So this one doesn't have to be the result of this one. That's the difference from the other one we just looked at. These could just be related. Now here we can also link a list of items. We begin with a colon that tells us that it's going to be a list following. But then we've got actions within that list. So the best courses of action are to refer him to the radiologist for x-rays. That's our first thing but we, we've separated it into different actions. So we use the semicolon to say that this is one action. The semicolon tells us we're moving on to another action. Testing here to confirm the diagnosis. So that's the second action. Now we move on to the last one. Or to admit him in, to admit him overnight for observations. So the, co the semicolons there, sorry, clearly break up each action for us so the reader can see what the action is okay the last one again is to join actions together or the result of one action one action is the result of another action or one action is related again to another action mr. Jones is undergoing a small operation Otherwise, everything is going to plan. So let's move on to the final section. Periods, as they say in the USA. Full stops, as we say in the UK. And hyphens. Full stops are used to mark the end of a sentence, mark the end of a sentence fragment, for initials and for abbreviations. That's all you need here. There are some other ones, you don't need them. Hyphens are used for continue words on a new line when writing. Before a hyphenated word which begins with a capital letter. 
to form compound adjectives to form compound nouns. Compound means mixed together. So, full stops. Again, end of sentence. Between titles, Dr. Jones. J.K. Rowling, someone's name. Harry, the author of the Harry Potter books. That's how she's known. And this is becoming less common, but it's still a part of punctuation, so I would suggest that you put them in there. Less and less people are using them these days, um, but that's a trend. It's not, it doesn't mean the grammar itself has changed. It's just that you will see it less and less. Okay, short fragment sentences. Yes, a bit, not really. These are answers to questions. Again, you might not need these, but if you ever in a situation where you have to write something, the, uh, the, re the patient responded negatively. That's a very short sentence. It has a full stop at the end. Abbreviations. Again, we usually use these abbreviations, but as I said, this less common these days. PS or RSVP can also be used. The last thing here now is hyphens. Here's an example when we're writing. If we get to the end of a line and we don't have any room, we could split our word. This tells the reader that this word is going to continue on the next line. If you're writing, you don't have to do this. This is only a situation where you're writing and you get to the end of the line and you realize you haven't got enough room. Most people would continue on the next line, but there might be a reason for you not to. So this is how you would put in a hyphen to tell the reader that the word continues. And again, when we use something that begins with a capital letter, the letter before is hyphenated. Sorry, the word before, which is linked to it, is hyphenated. Pro NHS, that means we're in favor of the NHS anti-NHS for example so this is how you would write it the next one is compound adjectives the patient does not need a prescription and can get over-the-counter drugs there's the noun drugs there's the adjective we've put three adjectives three words together to create one adjective we call this a compound adjective and the same with compound nouns, great grandmother. Here, great is not saying great as in fantastic, it's a title. A grandmother is a title, a great grandmother is also a title. So we hyphenate it like that. There are many hyphenated or compound words in English. Um, you probably won't need that many for the exam, but you probably should be aware of the ones that are there or the ones that you may have to use okay that's the end of this lesson I know it's slightly longer um, but I wanted to do everything in one hit as it were so again please subscribe to our YouTube channel um, I'm trying to make as many videos as I can uh, but I want them to be of good quality and with correct information so I'm not rushing them um, but if you subscribe you'll be informed when a new video comes out and you can also visit our website there's plenty of information on the website you can also book lessons um, for those of you who want to study together we do rates for two or three and one studying together online to hopefully help you reduce the cost of your studies. So thank you very much for your time and hopefully I will see you again.